Total quality is a corporate imperative for Westinghouse in the 80s. The operational side of total quality is reflected in the requirement for product and process leadership. Now a product is anything we deliver to the customer, either physical hardware or services. A process is what we do to deliver the product. World-class leadership in product and process involves taking a systems view of the operating side of our businesses. Projects are still performed one step at a time, but in the context of a systems plan which aims at world-class value-to-price and value-to-cost ratios. These two measurements determine customer satisfaction and the financial performance of our businesses. The goal of product and process leadership is to make these two ratios better than any of our global competitors. Now I can hear you say, that's okay, but how do I do it? To answer that question, our people at the Productivity and Quality Center have found an example of a world-class product designed and produced as a total system. And it's an all-American product, not a Japanese model. It's from IBM, their new Pro Printer. In designing their new printer, which replaces a private branded Japanese model, IBM used all the principles of product and process leadership. For example, they planned the product to give superior value. The new printer operates twice as fast as the Japanese model it replaces, and it has convenience features not found on its predecessor, all at a comparable price level. They dramatically reduce the number of parts to simplify assembly and service. IBM used multifunctional teams for every phase of the design process, including assigning people from engineering, manufacturing, and quality to each subassembly. They improved materials and parts quality, even developing a new plastic material which can hold close tolerances better than anything else available. And they designed the product for manufacture so that it could be automated for consistent quality. In a moment, we're going to show you how the new IBM Pro Printer goes together, along with some of the design features which make it such an outstanding development. However, I want to emphasize that all of these features are directly applicable to the design and manufacture of Westinghouse products. We can learn a lot from the IBM experience. For instance, in assembly, it's best to avoid motions which are upwards or diagonal because they're awkward and tend to cause errors. Also to be avoided are operations using deformable parts, like springs and belts, which are hard to handle and require extra adjustments in assembly. It's also a good idea to avoid rotating a piece in order to attach another part to it. And of course, screws and fasteners should be avoided wherever possible. They cause endless troubles in the factory. By far, the most preferred assembly motion is straight downwards, snapping a part in place while letting gravity help you. Now let's watch as John Dorman from the Productivity and Quality Center assembles the IBM Pro Printer and points out the design features which make it an outstanding example of product and process leadership. The first time John did this, it took him 15 minutes. Let's see how long it takes him now that he has some practice. This is the IBM Pro Printer. It's designed for assembly. We'll start off by pointing out a few of the key design features, and then during the assembly, you'll see the significance of those features. The base is a large fiber-reinforced molded plastic part. It acts as a pallet to carry the printer through the assembly. It also locates the two carriage side frames with respect to one another to minimize the tolerance demands. The left side of the carriage locates the two drive motors and the drive gears, and the designers took advantage of the elasticity of the plastic to mold a little leaf spring in to position a shaft. This eliminates the use of linkages and pins and springs that would be necessary in a traditional design. There are a number of steel shafts that are used to guide the print head and the paper. Each of the shafts is located only on one end. The other end is allowed to float. This minimizes any tolerance demands during manufacture. Also, all the locating diameters are different so that the shafts cannot be snapped into the wrong place. The print head is driven by a molded plastic screw pressed onto the end of the drive motor. The screw eliminates the use of belts and pulleys in a traditional design. All of the power and control circuitry is located on a single PC board. This eliminates the use of multiple PC boards in the inner board wiring operations that would be necessary during assembly. 
Also, sensors are used to indicate when paper is present and when the carriage head is returned. This eliminates the use of a micro switch and, again, wiring operations. Power supply consists of a transformer, an on-off switch, and a power cord outlet pre-assembled into a functional sub-assembly which can be tested before final assembly. There are a few points to note during the assembly operations. First of all, the goal of straight down insertion has not been achieved even though this is the state of the art in design. However, the motions that are required are simple and do not require much dexterity, so they can and have been automated by IBM. Secondly, the base will not be reoriented during the assembly. All of the required operations can be done from a single position. Finally, you'll note that no tools or screws are used during the assembly. We'll start off by putting the PC board in position. The power supply is then snapped in over it, capturing it in place, and plugged into the PC board. Paper tray with a locating guide is then snapped in place. Carriage frame takes two drive gears for the paper drive assembly. And the drive motor slips in place and twists to lock. It's then snapped to the base. And the motor is plugged in. Drive roller assembly slides into the carriage frame. is captured by the other side. Cast aluminum platen then snaps in place between the two side frames, fixing the width. Another paper tray is then slipped in and snapped to the base. And a tensioning shaft is snapped into the two leaf springs mentioned earlier. The drive screw and motor slide in, and the motor twists to lock, similar to the other motor. print head slips onto an eccentric shaft to adjust the contact pressure between the head and the paper. It's aligned with the nut and snapped in place. The print head is then plugged into the PC board. A small clip is snapped onto the end of the shaft in case the adjusting arm should ever come off. The tail shaft is used to support the back end of the print head. Drive gears are snapped in place to drive the ribbon. One is equipped with a spring clutch, which replaces a whole reversing gear assembly in a conventional design. The tractor drive assembly is then built next. Main drive shaft snaps in place, and the roller is snapped over the top and twisted to lock in place on a shaft. It's very difficult to slip a roller onto the end of a shaft, and this operation is very simple. Molded plastic parts are then snapped in place to fix the width of the paper. Comparable parts on another printer have springs as part of the assembly. A keypad is then snapped in place, making both mechanical and electrical connections simultaneously. The ribbon is then snapped in place. This is typically a fairly difficult operation since the ribbon is flexible. IBM allows the customer to take care of this. At this point, the printer is functionally complete and can be inspected, and any adjustments that are necessary can be made. After that, the hoods are snapped in place. Paper drive knob. A cover and a form separator are slipped in place and the printer is complete. We'll plug the printer in. Okay. we have a working printer. I think you'll agree. A pro printer is an outstanding example of product and process leadership, designed as a system and designed for manufacturing. 
It's currently produced on an automated production line in IBM Charlotte, North Carolina facility. But as you've seen, the design principles are equally good for manual assembly. The important point is that we must apply these techniques for product and process leadership in Westinghouse if we're going to be competitive in today's world. And we need to do it now.